If you could harness the wind, what would you do with it? Maybe you'd power your entire city, charge your phone forever, or finally escape paying your electric bill. But humans have been doing that, well, sort of, for centuries. From wooden towers creaking in the breeze to sleek giants spinning across farmlands, we've always looked at the wind and thought, how do I make this do my work for me? So today, we're setting the record straight, because believe it or not, those old-timey windmills and the futuristic turbines dotting the horizon aren't the same thing. This is windmill versus turbine. What's the difference? Right here on History of Simple Things. Long before electricity existed, humans were already putting the wind to work. Around 500 to 900 AD, people in Persia were building massive vertical axis windmills. Imagine towers made of wood and cloth, spinning not for power but for muscle, grinding grain, pumping water, crushing seeds. They weren't generating electricity. They were replacing oxen. The wind was their invisible worker. And these early windmills weren't fast or elegant. They were noisy, clunky, and unpredictable. But they worked, and that was all that mattered. As these designs spread to Europe, they evolved into the classic Dutch windmills we picture today. Big, picturesque towers turning slowly over tulip fields. Inside, gears, shafts, and grinding stones turned that lazy wind motion into mechanical energy. It was the ultimate pre-industrial multi-tool. It could grind wheat, drain swamps, and even saw wood. But still, no electricity, no light bulbs, no phone chargers, just raw, windy muscle. Fast forward to the 19th century. Humans start figuring out how to make electricity. Coal and steam engines were powering everything, but someone wondered, could the wind do it better? In 1887, a Scottish professor named James Blythe built what's believed to be the first wind turbine capable of generating electricity. It looked nothing like the giant machines we see today, more like a weird wooden pinwheel sitting on a cottage roof, but it worked. For the first time, wind was turning not just stones, but light bulbs. Across the Atlantic, American farmers were also catching on. They already had small metal windmills that pumped water out of wells. But when electricity came to rural areas, those windmills got a serious upgrade. Smaller blades, faster spin, and now a generator attached to the shaft. The windmill was officially evolving into the wind turbine. So here's the technical break. A windmill converts wind energy into mechanical energy. It physically powers something, like a millstone or water pump. A wind turbine, on the other hand, converts wind energy into electrical energy. One turns gears, the other turns electrons. Think of it this way. A windmill is a muscle. A turbine is a battery. A windmill is doing a physical job, moving grain, pulling water, running a mill. A turbine isn't doing anything visible, it's generating power that can be sent miles away to light up entire towns. And that simple difference, mechanical versus electrical, marks the split between two very different eras of human progress. Whether you call it a windmill or a turbine, both rely on the same invisible force, kinetic energy in moving air. When wind pushes against the blades, that motion gets transferred to a central shaft. In a windmill, that shaft connects to gears that grind or pump. In a turbine, the shaft spins a generator using magnetic fields to create electrical current. But here's the kicker. Turbines need the wind to be fast and consistent. The taller the tower, the more powerful the gusts. Modern turbines can reach heights of 300 feet or more, their blades longer than a Boeing 747's wings. Each spin can power a small neighborhood. A classic Dutch windmill, though? You'd be lucky if it powered a single bread mixer. 
Old windmills were masterpieces of wooden engineering. Beautiful, yes, but limited. They had huge blades, but they spun slowly, losing energy to friction and mechanical wear. Turbines, meanwhile, are aerodynamic marvels. Their blades are shaped like airplane wings, designed to slice through the air and spin at incredible speeds while minimizing drag. Inside, computer systems constantly adjust blade angles to capture the most energy from shifting wind directions. The old windmill didn't even have brakes. The modern turbine has AI that tells it when to rest. So in the matchup of form versus function, turbines win the efficiency game by miles. But in terms of charm, the windmill will always hold its crown. To really put things into perspective, let's talk numbers. A traditional windmill could produce maybe a few kilowatts, just enough for mechanical labor. A modern wind turbine? Around two to three megawatts on average. Some offshore turbines can reach 15 megawatts each, enough to power over 10,000 homes. And while a windmill took hours to grind a sack of grain, a turbine spins thousands of times per minute, feeding power directly into national grids. It's like comparing a bicycle to a bullet train. They both move forward, but they live in completely different centuries. People often mix up windmills and turbines because, well, they both spin in the wind. But one big difference is in how they sound and scale. A traditional windmill creaked like an old door. It was soothing, slow, rhythmic. A turbine, though, hums with an industrial whoosh a reminder that it's generating serious power. And the size difference? Ridiculous. The biggest windmills in history stood around 30 meters tall. The largest turbines today reach more than 250 meters, with blades sweeping across an area the size of six football fields. The future of turbines isn't just on land, it's floating. Engineers are building offshore turbines that hover on platforms miles out at sea, where winds are stronger and more consistent. Some even generate power for underwater data cables and electric ships. Meanwhile, traditional windmills are living out their second life as cultural landmarks, museums, and homes. Many are restored not for work, but for wonder, a tribute to the first machines that dared to turn air into energy. The torch, or rather the blade, has officially been passed. So next time you see a wind turbine slicing the sky, remember that it's the great-grandchild of a humble wooden windmill that once stood in a farmer's field, grinding wheat and creaking in the breeze. The same wind that once baked bread now powers cities. And while the designs may look worlds apart, the idea behind them remains the same. Harness the invisible and turn it into something that keeps us alive. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.